we got Brandon here and what he's doing currently is prepping the mold. Um, we just removed a part, so we've added warm water. Brandon's got some 1500 grit sandpaper and this is for one of our fiberglass molds. So he's sanding off any little pieces that are sticking up or any, any leftover residue uh, from the previous casting. And uh, he's gonna get this all cleaned up and then we're gonna wipe it out, wipe it clean, you know, make sure it's nice and washed and there is nothing uh, residual from the last mold in here anymore. So. All right, so we got the mold all cleaned up and now we have part all paste. This is a mold release wax. And as you can see, we use a lot of it. Um, we're gonna go around the entire mold and apply a thin coat. And then as soon as that starts to haze up, we take it off. You wanna do a very, very thin coat of this wax because it sticks uh, very, very well. So you don't wanna to have to try to scrub and scrub and scrub to get it off. So you wanna do a very thin coat. As soon as it starts to haze over, get a microfiber towel and come back and buff it right off. And we wanna do, on a new mold, probably at least six coats of this wax. On a used mold, um, you can do one or two coats between pulls. On this particular one, we're doing three coats. Um, but it kind of depends on what your mold surface looks like. If you have a really nice surface that's been waxed a bunch of times, you can put less coats on each time. Um, if you have a new mold, you're probably gonna have to do a, a couple coats of wax between each. Pull. Okay, so up next, the mold has been waxed. So we're gonna do a release agent and then we're gonna do the gel coat. I just wanted to walk through something real quick. Um, these are our mixing cups. So this is a standard graduated mixing cup that has different ratios on it. And uh, there's all kinds of ways to learn how to do this, but more or less one to one is 50-50. Um, and then, you know, the ratios change. You can also just use the measurements on it that are for ounces. So it has right here, you can see, it's really hard to show you, but there's an ounce measurement. Um, so these are about, uh, you know, 50 cents a piece. Sometimes you can't reuse them just based on, you know, they get cracked or too much heat. Um, and these are paper cups. So this is a non-waxed paper cup. Um, once you get used to using one of these and you know about how much material that you're going to need, you can use one of these. Obviously, it doesn't have measurements on it, but these are much cheaper. These are only about 10 cents a piece. Um, okay, so we're about to apply the PVA. Now, in a small mold like this, there's multiple ways you can apply it. You can spray it in, you can brush it in, or you can do something as simple as just folding up a paper towel. And uh, we're going to get that paper towel wet and we're just going to wipe it in. Since this has a nice coat of wax and everything, we just need a very thin coat of PVA, which is polyvinyl alcohol. Um, the kind that we're going to use right now is a Pardol film number 10. So this film is essentially, it's a, it's a polyvinyl suspended in alcohol. So it's a liquid vinyl. And when the alcohol dries off, it turns into almost a, um, like a saran wrap or a shrink film uh, type type thickness and uh, it actually almost looks like saran wrap on the mold itself so we're just going to dump a tiny bit in and then uh, Brandon's going to take that and just wipe the entire mold and get every surface and this will kind of self level as it goes so he will spread this out evenly over the entire mold and it will dry to a nice thin film which will allow this to not stick to the mold to allow the new part to not stick so that's the polyvinyl alcohol film all right, so Brandon has used the uh, little piece of paper towel to wipe the entire inside of the mold. And as you can see, it's got a fairly smooth, thin coating. We don't want any drips or anything like that. And this will dry within about a minute. Um, if, you, if it's really cold or it's really humid out, you may need to use a hair dryer um, or a heat gun. You don't want to get it too hot. You can just, you know, let it, let it kind of uh, evaporate off. It, it, it evaporates very quickly as it is made of alcohol. Um, but that's kind of what we're looking for. We're looking for a surface finish that's evenly shiny all the way around and looks like everything's coated. And that will just be our last defense against the part sticking in the mold. So that's right. So Brandon has the heat gun now. And what we're going to do is going to go through and just kind of force dry this. And it should only take a couple of seconds as the heat gun's fairly warm. Brandon will keep the uh, air fairly high. We don't want to get the mold too hot. We just want to dry it. So he's going to go around here and just get everything to dry up. And you can almost watch it in real time dry um, as that alcohol evaporates off. So you can actually see it go dull as we, as we speak here. So that entire top flange just dries within seconds. So if you're in a rush or you, know, you just wanna get started on your gel coat, um, you can force dry it with a hair dryer or a heat gun as we're doing. We just keep it moving, don't get it too hot, just dry it up. As Soon as it's dull, 
and doll in every spot, you'll know it's dry. Okay, so Brandon is just finishing up getting this dried out, and as you can see, there's a dull surface. I mean, it's still shiny, but it's duller than it would be if we didn't have that PVA in there. So this is what it should look like right before your gel coat. All right, so we took some brown gel coat um, we had left over from another project, and we put it into one of these uh, non-waxed paper cups. Now, I don't want a... Uh, I don't want a, a brown piece to come out of my mold. I just don't like the color. Um, so we're going to add some black pigment. And you can get this from all different places, but this specific black pigment, um, and it changes the color of your gel coat. So Brandon's going to use a tongue depressor. We buy these cheap. You can get them at any kind of craft store. And they work great for mixing stuff up. Um, and then we just toss them when we're done. Sometimes you can get a couple uses out of one. And as you can see, it's darkening up. It's not 100% black. It's kind of like a dark grayish black, a little bit of a brown hue to it. And as we mix it, it'll change even more. So this is the hardener I use. It is a uh, MEKP, uh, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide. Um, any MEKP will work. Mine is red for a specific reason. The red is called a vanishing red. So what happens is when the part gets warm and starts to kick off and cure, the red will disappear and the, the liquid will essentially turn clear. And that's how you know that your part has kicked off and cured. So I use this, uh, it's the same as a clear, it just happens to have a red pigment in it that goes away as it cures. So we're gonna use 2% uh, methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, MEKP, and we're going to use this little bottle. This little bottle is really cool because what happens is you squeeze it and the fluid actually comes into this little cup, which is a measuring device. And we got a little line on there for how much we know that it takes to do about 10 ounces of, of uh, a gel coat. So we're going to put it up to that line and I'm just going to pour it right in. And then Brandon will stir that up and we'll be ready to apply it. All right, so Brandon's been stirring the gel coat. He scrapes the sides, he gets the bottom, he gets every part of this to make sure that it's very well mixed. And I recommend in a 70 degree temperature to give this a mix for at least two minutes or so to make sure that all of the materials blended together well. We buy these cheap china bristle brushes, what they're called, and we buy them in bulk by the hundreds. Um, and then what we do is every time we're gonna use one, we pick through this and make sure there's no loose uh, little bristles that are gonna fall out once we start brushing in the mold. So you wanna make sure that you kind of go through here and you pick out any loose pieces because there's always loose ones and there you go. And that would end up in the surface of your mold and you don't want that. So you pick out all the little loose pieces and then we can start applying the gel coat. So Brandon's gonna start to dump in some of the gel coat and we typically add a little bit in the center and then we go around the top edge. We kind of know about how much to put everywhere as we've done this a bunch of times. And that'll get us a uh, nice coating started and then we'll finish by using the brush to kind of level everything out and get it even around the entire mold surface. So Brandon's removing all of the resin from the cup. And the point of that is this will cure a lot slower if it is spread out in a thin layer. If it's in the cup, it will kick off much quicker as this cures based on heat and the more material, the quicker. So if you think of it like glue, the thicker your glue is, the longer it takes. This is the exact opposite. The thicker this gel coat is, the faster it will set off. So it does not dry. As you will hear people say in videos, I'm waiting for it to dry. Gel coat does not dry. Fiberglass resin does not dry, it cures. It cures off of that hardener, the MEKP that we added. That's what actually gets the process started. And then it goes into a heat reaction where the heat and the MEKP together actually cure the part. So the thinner it is, the longer it's gonna take to cure. The thicker it is, the quicker it's gonna cure. So if you leave it in the cup, it will more than likely kick off and start to harden within minutes. So you wanna get it all out of the cup and get it into the mold as quickly as possible and then you can take your time spreading it nice and even in the mold. Okay, so Brandon has finished laying it in. We just finished, so this is gonna take another minute or two for all the uh, brush marks and stuff to settle out. But this is what you want, a nice consistent brush pattern all the way around, no thick spots. Uh, the thick spots can cause you problems in the future and what I mean by that is the gel coat can cure at different times, as I said. If it's thicker, it can cure faster, um, and you want it to be all the same thickness so that it cures at the same time. 
um, if you get into where it's different thicknesses on the mold, it can cause lifting problems where, you know, you'll get like almost a bubble that'll lift off the mold and you don't want that. So mo the most consistent or the uh, more consistent you can be, the better um, in the thickness of application. So spraying it obviously is the better way to go, but you end up with a lot of uh, wasted material as well as having to clean a paint gun and all of this. With this uh, process, we only spend about 35 cents with the cup and the brush to get this laid in the mold. So it's a little bit cheaper and uh, you know uses less materials. So Brandon's prepping the fiberglass and we're using fiberglass mat for this. And I wanted to show you something kind of interesting about the mat. Now this is a bunch of random fibers that are pressed together and then they're held together by a binder. So you can actually separate layers of this if you need a thinner uh, you know, version of it. Um, you can buy the thick stuff and you can actually split it right down the middle. You can see how it tears apart and splits. Um, and as we prep this, we'll, we'll split some pieces and we'll use some pieces in their full thickness uh, depending on where we're placing them. But Brandon's gonna prep these out, get a bunch of pieces, um, randomly sized but you know kind of in the neighborhood of of something around that size and then we'll start laying them into the mold now the mold as you can see is gel coated how do we know it's ready it leaves a fingerprint but it doesn't come off on your finger so you can see how i could push my fingerprint into it but my fingers are not picking any up that's how you know your gel coat is ready to apply fiberglass and resin all right, so we've got resin. We added a little bit of black dye to it. Um, this is still a little bit brown and uh, they get painted so it doesn't matter on the outside, but we want the inside to be black so that if anybody looks inside the hood scoop that they see you know, black inside. So we've dyed the resin black. This is just regular fiberglass resin, polyester resin. And we're gonna add the hardener to it, which is MEKP. We're gonna use the same vanishing red uh, MEKP that we used previously and get that mixed up. So he's metering out the MEKP. You can see it filling up there in the little graduated cylinder. We're gonna add that in and get it stirred in. And we'll stir that for about a minute and a half and then we will start uh, laying up the glass. Got all of it mixed up. We're gonna start, uh, we're gonna just pour a really light coating and he's gonna brush that over the entire surface and that's just gonna get it prepped um, to accept our fabric or our, uh, our fiberglass mat. So he, he's not gonna put a whole bunch down, just a starter and then kind of brush the entire surface area just to get that uh, initial coating down and make sure it's into all the little gaps and voids. And... Okay, so Brandon is finishing up uh, the first layer and this is just some resin with a black dye in it. And he's got the entire inside of the mold surface coated. All right, so now Brandon's gonna grab some random pieces of glass and just start on one end. And we typically do about a quarter of the uh, mold at a time. We'll get those pieces laid in, they're laid in dry, and then uh, we'll push them down into the resin. And as we get it laid in, then we'll start actually pushing the uh, pieces down into the resin and, and wetting those out. But initially we just kind of set them in there, get everything positioned so that there's no hard edges overlapping any other hard edges. You know, you want to, especially real tight radius areas like this, you, and uh, you know, the grooves, you want a feathered edge, one of these feathered, you know, torn edges, not a sharp cut edge. Um, and kind of explain what I'm talking about here. If you were to imagine this piece, this part will blend much easier than this sharp edge here. Um, so if you're trying to put this down into a curve, you'd really want to put the you know, the feathered end here down into the curve instead of the sharp edge, which may not conform. So, you know, we pick the pieces strategically to go in specific spots so that they lay in there and they don't bridge. You don't end up with air pockets or any kind of a gap underneath. So Brandon's pushing the resin down into the fibers um, using what we call a stipling action. And that's kind of uh, working the brush, you know, along the surface while pushing up and down. And what that does, it forces the resin down into the fabric or the uh, mat in this case, and it slowly pushes it in there. Now, as this mat gets wetted out, the uh, whiteness will go away and it'll actually turn clear. And that's the binder that holds these little tiny fabrics, uh, I'm sorry, these little tiny fibers together. They're actually held together with kind of like, you can imagine it's a glue. Um, and when it gets wettened out by the uh, fiberglass resin, it actually melts away and uh, this will go 
pretty much crystal clear except for you know obviously we've added dye here but if this were just you know regular clear resin this would turn almost perfectly clear once it got wet with the uh, polyester resin so Brandon's going to work his way around uh, continue stipling in this resin for this first layer you know we do a, a fairly rich resin layer um, with the glass and then we'll back that up by 50 50 ish uh, layers of glass and resin mixture. So I'll come back when this has its entire first layer um, put down and we'll talk about what we're going to do for the flange in the second layer. Okay, so Brandon has done about three quarters of this with two layers so far. As you can see, it's all been pressed in. We don't have any resin sitting on top, no pools, anything like that. You want to see a nice consistent color and layer. Uh, he's actually working on the second layer right now as he's pressing that resin in, stipling it. So we're going to do uh, one more reinforcement layer around this edge, and then any uh, trouble spots, we know where they're at. We'll add in a couple little extra pieces. But for the most part, he is going to finish up uh, putting this layer down, and then one more little thin layer, and this will be uh, three layers thick, and that will be the final product. Well, it's been about 16 hours since we started the project. You've seen it from start to finish. Uh, here it is cured and in the mold. Um, we're gonna grab, I've got a bunch of different plastic uh, spatulas and scrapers, and we actually use these as wedges. This one is a, a slight wedge. Um, <clears throat> and what we'll do is we'll go around and release the part from the mold, kind of find a spot that looks like we can get underneath. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed, but kind of work our way around and grab another one. And if we did this right, it should separate pretty easily. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to work my way the rest of the way around with these spatulas. I'm going to get them in here, you know, randomly around around the perimeter. Once I get this separated, and I think that the perimeter is breaking breaking free here then I'm just gonna squirt a blast of air underneath I should pop it the rest of the way out all right so that separated really nice and that's because we did those wax layers and the uh, PVA so we've got a really nice flange separation I'm gonna grab some air all right so I got my air I got my little separation there where I put that wedge under and I'm just going to fire air right in between the mold and the part. And you, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it just popped it right free. And there we go. It's just that easy. Popped right out of the mold. So you can see this has a little bit of a dull surface finish. Now that's due to two things. One, the PVA, you know, it doesn't leave the shiniest surface. And two, our mold isn't super highly polished since this is just a fiberglass mold. If this were a carbon fiber mold, um, we'd have it polished a lot, you know, a lot better because this this is going to be the finished product. On this one, you know, these get sanded and painted. Um, so this is a perfect finish for coming out of this mold. So there you have it. Step by step, how to produce a part from a mold.